Do it one more time. Boop. 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 You got it. You got it. Alright, let's keep going. We're on the road. Ready? Ma. Ma. Mm -mm. Look at Ma. 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 All right, so there she is. The Jamaica Speech and Hearing Association is observing Better Speech and Hearing Month. Didn't know about that. Their president, newly elected president and speech language pathologist, uh, Anne Marita Golding, uh, wants to raise awareness about communication disorders. And she's with us now. Morning, my friend. Good to see you. Hi, Ned. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good joy. Well, I'm sorry. You... I'm sorry. Good morning, uh... Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Sorry. Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> um, the joy when you got that word out of that child is indescribable. Is Obviously, it? that's why you do what you do. For folks who don't understand your work, what do you do? So I am a speech-language pathologist, better or more commonly known as a speech therapist. And I work with um, individuals. Most people see and know me to work with children, but I actually work with everyone, children and adults who have communication disorders um, that can range from children with speech and language delay, kids on the autism spectrum who, who may be verbal or nonverbal, all the way up to individuals who have had a stroke or a traumatic brain injury and they have difficulty communicating because of that injury, because they have aphasia or or, some, or other things. I, we, we do communication disorders. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that we do do that most people don't know, and I had mentioned it to Neville the last time I was here, is that we treat for swallowing disorders as well, which can um, occur because of a stroke or even in children may have dif difficulty swallowing, swallowing as well. Disorders. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so the association, look here now, how many of you, there are eight of you in Jamaica, Honey? Um, I think last time we checked, there's about seven or eight of us practicing. Licensed, Simone. Oh, That's a big what? deal. What? There That's are unlicensed people doing this? There are, but you know, I've noticed on social media there are people doing dental work and all sorts oh, of medical true. procedures. Braces. And they've never gone to medical or dental school. The same thing here. So I always urge people when they are seeking a speech therapist to. Ask that practitioner, where were you trained? Are you licensed in Jamaica or overseas? And, and actually see their licensure so that you're sure that they've actually trained in the profession and they're not just pretending. Mm -hmm. Better speech and hearing month, as I said at the top. I didn't even know there was a month for that. This is something new or it always was? No, what? Um, you know, it was actually, it, it actually originated many, many years ago by the um, American Speech and Hearing Association, ASHA. And we observe it as well. We do have a small association here, but we, it's a one time for the year, the month of May, that we get to advocate for a profession and also encourage young people to pursue the profession, there are far more children being born, <coughs> excuse me, who are neurodiverse, neuro finding more children on the autism spectrum. And there are just not enough of us here practicing to service and assist all these needs mm -hmm. that, that come to our, I mean, I have a waiting list through the wazoo. Oh, I do, and I, I, I feel badly that I can't stretch myself more the problem is that the profession is not, the degree is not offered here at the University of the West Indies or UTEC or NCU or any one of the other universities. So you really have to study abroad, whether in America or North America or in the UK. Um, so for those who are fortunate enough to be able to study overseas, it is a profession that we are advocating for, for more people to pursue. Apart from autism and a stroke, what other <coughs> reasons would someone have a, I don't know if it's, it's um, right to so, say a speech impediment, so I don't speech, know if that's the right so way to say So when we speak of speech and language disorders, when we speak of, when we're thinking about speech, we're thinking about fluency, so people who stutter, voice disorders, not just your singers, but people develop different issues with the vocal cords, or they may have had surgery, they come to us. And then the language portion is actually, oh sorry, in addition to speech articulation, you may have a child who is speaking, but you don't understand a word out of his mouth. I've had... Um, explain that. Explain that. 
Well, um, because they're just not articulating the sounds. The enunciation is bad. The, and not just the enunciation, they may not know how to produce a sound. Gotcha. Right? So children may produce sounds incor incorrectly, but past age seven, they're about they should have acquired all their sounds and be able to articulate them accurately. So if they're not articulating them accurately, then they would need to see a speech therapist mm -hmm. because there may be something physiological or maybe something else going on. Yeah. Um, so as, in addition to language disorders, which has to do with um, expressive language, everything we say and the meaning behind that and receptive language, communicate um, comprehension and what we understand in conversation with other people. Do you do lisps? We do do lisps. Okay. Um, we, we do different tongue thrusts, as we call it, depending on what the, the type of lisp mm -hmm. that it is. Mm -hmm. And we work on placement and, again, articulation of the sound so that it is better. I've had lawyers send their associates to me because they have to present in court or and they need to articulate themselves in a manner that would be beneficial, be befitting, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Tips for building strong speech and language skills. First one says repetition, which kind of... Well, repetition, okay. So um, I had compiled these tips for the wider public because I believe well, there's just not enough to go around. So not everybody will be seen by a speech therapist, but there are definitely things that parents and family members can do at home. So when you, when you suspect that your child may not be speaking or communicating very well, they may have speech and language delay, um, you can work on sounds and words and begin to repeat that sound and word throughout the day or the week um, for an extended period of time. So repetition helps to solidify and teach and solidify a particular thing. Visuals are important. Visuals, flash yes. Cards. So flashcards, pairing a word, or a sound with a picture. If you're working on the R sound, you can show them the rabbit, the rattle, things like that, and produce the sound. Mod children learn through modeling. Mm -hmm. Don't just stick your child in front of a device and think that's going to teach them how to communicate or teach them vocabulary and things of that nature. You need to, you need to, it needs to be one-on-one -on -one and, and done through play. Science, scientists have have shown us that children learn best through play-based activity. Yep. Yeah. Increase opportunities. Increase the opportunity for them to. So instead of just giving them the juice box, ask them, well, what is this? Um, produce the sound, you know, produce that J sound. J -j 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 -j. Um, try to repeat the word over and over and pair the word again with a visual so they will request it instead of just them pointing and you handing it to them. That does not create an opportunity for them to learn how to produce the sound or the word. And self-talk versus parallel talk. So self-talk is describing everything you're doing. You're washing the dishes, um, mommy is picking up the, the sponge, oh, we need the soap, oh, look at the soap, it's bubbly. Um, you're talking about what you're doing versus parallel talk, you're talking about what the child is doing. Oh, look at Johnny stir the pot, that you're doing that so well. Oh, you're using a spoon to stir. So you're talking about what they're doing. You're pairing um, your description with action. Yeah. I guess the answer to this question would depend on how, I don't know if I want to say how bad the person is, but how long would it take to move from A to B? Um, well, it depends on, I mean, if you suspect that there may be an issue in your, your child's development, and we're speaking about children now, speech pathology spans as I said, yeah. a wide spectrum. Wide spectrum. But um, if you're dealing with speech development in children and you suspect that your child may be delayed, you want to first see a pediatrician or a speech pathologist. You want to get an opinion of what could be going on medically or physiologically, and then have that child assessed. Um, you can't do it by yourself, but certainly if you have, a, have an assessment, you'll know at least where that child is where they should be and we can chart a plan as to how to get there and if you can't get into a speech therapy um, program then perhaps you can be guided by a speech therapist as to what you can do at home so we can have measurable and achievable so goals. So you wouldn't do the assessment? I do this assessment. And the waiting list for the assessment is as long as the waiting list for treatment? Um, 
Perhaps not, mm -hmm. but I know most of my colleagues don't like to assess if they can't treat. Because gotcha. you assess no, say gotcha. I can't see you mm -hmm. for eight months, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to reassess mm -hmm. because a lot can happen okay, between now and then. Yeah. But I've already asked about the length of time, but is it an everyday thing? You see them once a week, you so, see them once a um, month? You know, typically a child in the U.S. in a public school who is getting services from the school um, would see would, would, would be seen anywhere from three to five days per week, you know, 40, 40 minutes, 45 minutes for the day. However, because there's so few of us, on average, I see a client once to twice per week. Okay. And how long is session same 40 minutes? So they're, both, they're about, they're yeah. about because, you know, the volume, yeah. the volume. Um, sure. Can I say before we close, guys, I am encouraging, it's Better Speech and Hearing Month, I'm encouraging our young people who are sitting CXC, who are sitting um, exams in sixth form and looking for a career path. Speech language pathology is one to consider, particularly if you're fortunate enough to get a scholarship to go overseas. You know you like the medical field, you can work in the schools, you can work in the hospitals. We don't have any speech pathologists in our hospitals, Dr. Tufton. We, um, we need to have people assessed for different things to ensure that we can grant them the services they need. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks, Nev. It's good to see you. Say hi Tim? to the family, but say hi, say hi to your dad specifically. You always say hi for daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you. Hi, Mom. Uh, hi, Mom, right? <laughs> like, I remember I said say hi to the family, but specifically. You judge his old boys. Uh, <laughs> no, I just, I just the boss. I just like you. <laughs> By the way, happy birthday to, to Jody. Jody Ann works here with us, and I should have said it this morning. So, Jody. Hope you have a great day and many, many happy returns. Belated, I think it was yesterday. Um, so hope you had a great day. All right, President and Jashal's President and Speech Language Pathologist and Marita Goldie. All right, second edition of News in Five is next, everybody.